This is Brad Russell with Faith Village. Today we welcome Stephen Mansfield, who's actually in Washington, D.C. We certainly um, were intrigued to sit down with you. You recently have authored the book, um, The Mormonizing of America, how yes. the Mormon um, religion has become a dominant force in politics, entertainment, and pop culture. Now, one of the ideas you close with in your book is that you talk about, uh, with Mormons gaining prominence, uh, they're also likely to be exposed to a number of forces that will cause some shifts in Mormonism in the coming years. Talk a little bit about what you anticipate um, will kind of be cast new light on Mormonism or be new new challenges for Mormonism as it seeks a leadership role in our culture. Yeah, I, I think that that uh, you know Mormonism is being shaped by American society just as it's attempting to shape American society, and I think we're going to see a different Mormonism emerge in the years to come. Uh, I certainly understand that a certain amount of secrecy safeguards sacredness, and that's the case the Mormons would make. I mean, I, there are things sacred to me in my faith that I don't talk about. I consider them secret. I consider them between me, God, my wife, my, my pastor, um, and, I, and I wouldn't want to talk about them openly. But Mormons, of course, take this to a bit of an extreme. Um, if you are, if you have a, a, a Mormon male friend who gets married and he asks you to be one of his groomsmen, uh, you're going to be waiting in the, in the lobby of the temple while he goes in with his other Mormon friends and gets married. You can't go in there. Now, I'm not too worried about that, but that translated to uh, Mormon money. Uh, Mormons make huge money. Uh, they don't report any of it, and it's all tax-free. Now, I'm in favor of tax exemption for religious institutions. I'm also in favor of some degree of accountability when you're going to use that money to shape politics. And, and it's not about what Stephen Mansfield thinks. It's about what the society as a whole is going to demand. The Mormons stepping into Prop 8 in California uh, brought them under some scrutiny that they're going to have to deal with. Um, I, I think they're, they're also going to have to confront their history. You know, Mormons have not gained acceptance in American society by an airing of their theology. Uh, they have gained acceptance in American society through celebrity. And, and that's not to take anything away from their hard work. They had a Mormon senator uh, who went through a three-and-a-half-year confirmation hearing around 1900, Reed Smoot, he was the first prominent positive Mormon in the society. It just continued from there with athletes and war heroes. And yes, Donnie and Marie Osmond in the 70s. Um, and it, uh, it just is going to continue uh, with, with that kind of a thing. But as a result of it being celebrity, Mitt Romney, Glenn Beck, you know, all the folks, Catherine Heigl, uh, you, what, you're gonna, what you're dealing with is a total ignorance of their theology. Well, at, at, if Mitt Romney becomes president, you're going to have an airing of what uh, Mormons have done, what, what Joseph Smith believed. Uh, what Brigham Young said, so the, Brigham Young thought people lived on the sun. I mean, I could just go on and on. You, I mean, they're not stupid people, but they said crazy things at times. And if these things aren't discussed, if these things aren't aired, um, then, then, of course, you're just going to have, it's just going to be because we live in a more open society. The other thing is that Mormons tend to teach their people uh, what they call faith-promoting issues. So they stay away from the big apologetic uh, issues. They, they, they stay away from Mountain Meadows, for example, the massacre in their history of, of, of a wagon train of people. They stay away. They, don't, they only give a slight treatment to polygamy or uh, blacks in the priesthood and so on. And so one of the dynamics that's affecting them, they told me, uh, was that young Mormon 16, 17 will go out on the Internet, go to some of these apologetic sites, and they're not so much mad that Mountain Meadows happened or that polygamy happened. They're mad that the church didn't tell them the whole story, and they had to go to outsiders to get the whole story, which they can substantiate academically. And that's, that's caused dozens of that age group to leave, and it's something they're really dealing with. So you, you, could, you could control your history and the telling of your history. You could control, uh, to some extent, what was believed uh, to be in order to be a Mormon throughout most of history. But now in our high-tech world, I mean, you, 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 you just have to get there firstest with the mostest, as they say out here in D.C., and shine a light on your weaknesses and admit your faults and tell the whole story before somebody else tells it, or you will lose out here votes. And in Mormonism, you'll lose people because people have information they've never had before. So all of that openness, uh, all of that uh, counter secrecy kind of thing, uh, the need to be, uh, and by the way, just, just, just sheer science. You know, I come from a Native American background. There's no common, uh, commonality between my DNA, um, and that of Hebrews, mm -hmm. uh, Hawaii, where I go every year to do a conference, 
uh, Mormons are uh, approaching them with, from the perspective that they are part of the lost tribes. Well, that would make them of Hebrew background. There's no connection between a native Hawaiian and Hebrews. How do we know? Science, DNA, something Joseph Smith couldn't have dreamed. So all of this is coming around them, crashing in on them, taking the young from them. And there's going to have to be a restructuring of the way they approach their truth, their teaching, their education, their apologetic to the nation, um, or, the, or they're just going to implode. And, and uh, that we've seen that happen to some extent. And now I think maybe some more progressive leaders are, are taking the lead. Well, it certainly will be fascinating to watch in so many different aspects of culture. And, and I thank you, Stephen, for really helping us kind of get our brains around that. Now, before we close, talk to me about your next project. What's coming up for Stephen Mansfield? I have written an, another book that I really, really love. It may be my best. I don't know. Uh, it's called Lincoln's Battle with God. Uh, Abraham Lincoln is a big topic right now with the Spielberg film coming out that's going to be so wonderful. Um, I had, I've been researching him my whole life and basically, real briefly, either historians paint him as a total atheist or religious figures, religious writers paint him as the perfect whatever, Christian or you know, occultist or whatever. And the reality is that he was a man on a spiritual journey. He was a man who believed himself cursed in his early life by God had to grow against that, and finally he becomes the man who gives uh, the great second great awake, uh, second uh, inaugural address that we see on the side of the Lincoln Memorial in D.C. So he made a journey towards a wonderful uh, concept of a sovereign God, even if he didn't make a journey towards you know, complete Christianity or an evangelical kind of Christianity. And the journey is so fascinating that I was privileged to be able to tell it. So Lincoln's battle with God is going to be a lot of fun. be out in the middle of November. Mm -hmm.